Now here's something that often comes up. I see it in the comments. People think automatically that these cables are going to be much faster than these cables. But is that the truth? Are longer Thunderbolt 3 cables slower than shorter Thunderbolt 3 cables? Well, not necessarily. I often find myself complaining about this right here. This is the Thunderbolt 3 cable that you normally find packed inside of Thunderbolt 3 devices. This is a 0.5 meter Thunderbolt 3 cable. It is a passive cable. It's capable of providing full 40 gigabits per second connectivity to your MacBook Pro. But as you can see, it's really short, right? You don't have a lot of wiggle room when it comes to connecting your accessories. So for instance, say you had an external GPU, you have your MacBook Pro, your external GPU is gonna be very close to your MacBook Pro, which isn't always ideal. Some of those things can get uh, fairly loud. You're not gonna have a lot of wiggle room there with this cable. Now, why do manufacturers include these type of cables inside their boxes most of the time? Well, one of the reasons is cost. These are the cheapest Thunderbolt 3 cables you can come by. They're passive cables, so there's no extra transceivers which drive up cost, um, and they work at full speed. So what's not to like about it, right? It's cheap, it works at full advertised speed. Yeah, why not throw it in? But as you can see, they're just not very convenient. I definitely prefer something like this. Now, this is obviously way longer. This is the two meter Thunderbolt 3 cable but there's a big difference between this and this outside of, of length, obviously. Uh, this is an active cable, hence it's much more expensive and it features transceivers in the connectors to help reliably transmit data over longer distances. So yeah, these cost more money. Another difference between this type of cable, an active cable and a passive cable is that active cables are not backwards compatible with the USB 3.x whereas passive cables are backwards compatible with USB 3.x. So what does that mean? Well, basically, if you try to connect this to a USB SSD that supports 10 gigabits per second bandwidth, or even one that supports five gigabits per second bandwidth, your speeds are gonna be just that, 10 gigabits per second, five gigabits per second. If you try to do the same with this, your speeds are gonna drop down to USB 2 era performance. So that means 480 megabits per second, which is really slow. So you basically don't ever wanna use these active cables with USB 3.x devices. You can use these with USB 3.x devices. So just something else to consider. But if you're solely focused on Thunderbolt 3, none of that really matters. Um, the nice thing about this though, is that I can connect an external GPU. I can put it on the floor, still have it connected to my MacBook Pro. I have a whole lot more wiggle room to work with when compared to something like this. Now here's something that often comes up, I see it in the comments, people think automatically that these cables are gonna be much faster than these cables. But is that the truth? Are longer Thunderbolt 3 cables slower than shorter Thunderbolt 3 cables? Well, not necessarily. Now the answer to that question is interesting because yes, technically longer Thunderbolt 3 cables can be slower than a shorter Thunderbolt 3 cable like this. If you have a longer passive cable, that means they don't have any extra electronics in the connectors to help uh, transmit data over longer distances, then you may notice reduced speeds. Those cables can only connect at a maximum of 20 gigabits per second, those longer passive cables, whereas active cables can maintain full th Thunderbolt 3 connectivity at 40 gigabits per second. But even with a longer passive cable, you still may not notice that much of a difference with performance, depending on the type of application that you're using. So I went in and I've tested these things for hours with various different tests, with eGPUs, with external SSDs, just to see what the difference was and to see if we could draw any reasonable conclusions from this test. So here's what we found. Okay, so the results were so close that making a graph almost just didn't make sense. So I just wanted to spell it out like this for you guys. So you can see I have the two columns on the left, the passive 0.5 meter and the active two meter. Those results are so close that it's almost indiscernible. And with real world usage, you're not gonna notice a difference at all. Now you will notice a difference if you use a longer 
passive cable, which is simulated using that 20 gigabits per second column on the right, you'll notice some slower results with that test, particularly with SSDs. And even when connecting to something like this, this OWC M.2 SSD RAID enclosure, you're gonna have similar speeds when comparing active and passive cables. Now you will notice significantly reduced speeds if you try to connect this with a longer passive cable that connects at 20 gigabits per second. So keep that in mind. So how confident should you be when it comes to the active versus passive cable debate? Well, here's what I conclude. Razer, who makes this external GPU, actually includes a two meter active cable bundled in with this GPU. It doesn't include a passive cable at all. So if Razer, who makes this external GPU, is willing to provide an active two meter cable, then that should really tell us everything we need to know. That two meter cable is gonna be just as fast as the passive cable when connected to this external GPU. Now, we haven't talked about power delivery. We're not gonna even touch on that subject. Just keep in mind that some cables are able to provide the full 100 watts of power delivery. Some cables are not. You have to check with each manufacturer in order to, to find out which ones do and which ones don't. I recommend the CalDigit cable just because I've used it. It's a two meter active cable and it is capable of supporting the full 100 watts of power delivery. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think about this whole thing? Do you prefer active cables? Do you prefer passive cables? Sound off down below in the comment section and let me know what you guys think. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.